It's late summer, but that means, Jacques, we have to start <laughs> our fall gardens. It's hot. I'm tired. We've had a long day in the garden, but you gotta always prep. Always be seeding. ABS. It's true. It's true. Join us, my friends. <laughs> Cultivate that like button. Grab your seed catalog. Grab your seed storage. We're gonna run through some of our favorites for a beautiful, productive fall garden. And if you're in a cold climate, you're saying, hey guys, I hate you. I can't actually grow in fall. Maybe mark these down for next spring. There you or go. try to pull something off of the cold frame. You can still try to do something. So Jacques, kick us off. I'm kicking us off with a classic, which is cabbage. <laughs> so okay. I have the Copenhagen Market Cabbage. This is a nice one just because it's pretty quick. So I actually expect to be harvesting this one in this early winter period. Okay. Instead so, of like overwintering it for spring. Yeah, yeah, because for us, higher the zone, the milder the winter, the more you actually have the possibility to go through winter. And that sounds like a luxury, it definitely is. Yeah. But actually, it's the only way we can grow certain plants. So I'm going in with the cauliflower. This is Snowball Y. All these seeds, of course, you can find from Botanical Interests, which is our seed company. You can check our catalog out. But Snowball Y, I had a lot of success with last year, Jacques. 70, 80 day crop and Honestly, cauliflowers, broccoli, Brussels, cabbage, all were fantastic for me last year. Probably my best year of brassicas really year. yet. So I'm very excited this year. I've, yeah. I've found sort of my cadence. And that's what I've noticed, dude, is with a lot of these plants that we struggle with, I would venture to guess that a lot of the problem is plant timing. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people will mess that up, myself included. It took me a year or two before I was really comfortable growing any of the stuff I'm about to show you guys. So you got a cauliflower going in and I am going in with a hedged bet which is the Kailan, which is a Chinese style broccoli. Mm. The reason why it's a hedged bet is that this is actually very heat tolerant. So okay. this is one that you can grow in that late fall period and still get a nice little harvest. I would say it's closer to like a broccolini. I grew some last year, yeah. really delicious. The leaves are delicious. The stems are tasty, really good saute. I'm going with the Italian Red of Florence onion or bunching onion. And when you plant these guys, we had a lot of success with the onions this year, just oh, yeah. the, bul the bulbing onions. So what I'm doing, Jock, with these is I'm doing a bulk sort of multi-sew, uh, especially with a bunching onion. Obviously, that's kind of the play. So I'm throwing five, maybe sometimes up to even 10 seeds in one planting cell. So this epic six cell tray actually becomes an epic, potentially 60 cell tray. <laughs> yeah. and, and this is the perfect way to grow the bunching onions. We actually just had the great Charles Dowding on our podcast, which is called The Beat. Uh, so. That's really where I learned multi-sewing was, was yeah, from him. I've learned all about so it. much from, from Charles on this stuff. So I'm actually following your lead here. I'm going in with a bunch of onion too, but oh, I'm going shoot. with the Tokyo Long White. So same idea, I I'm planning a bunch. I had success with that last year. I don't know why uh, bunching onions don't like me uh, in general. <laughs> like they just never well, seem well, to really Well, you had a hard time though with bulbing this year, right? Yeah, they, 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 they were okay, but they weren't like exactly. stellar. Yeah. Like they were, they were like, Average onions. Okay, so, yeah, so this one's interesting. So I'm a big <laughs> fan of golden beets, as you know. Oh yeah. I've tried golden. I've tried golden boy. I am now trying touchstone gold. So this one I have never tried before. I'm pretty excited about it. Beets, I will have to say, like I'm gonna plant probably two flats worth because I personally love a golden beet. Don't yeah. really like the red ones too much, but these ones are just super sweet, less earthy almost like a candy. I'm really sad because I actually failed my beets. I failed because I didn't grow any this year. I just totally forgot. You didn't grow any beets? I like literally forgot. Oh Somehow God. I just didn't plant any. Sacrilege. But I love golden beets as well. But right now I just started some red Russian kale. Mm. Red Russian is my favorite sort of um, frilly kale. Yeah. It has like a really nice soft texture. It makes great salads. You can still use it in soups. So definitely my personal favorite for a salad kale. And I'm also going to be adding in a couple herbs to fill in some gaps. Yeah. So right now, for example, I'm putting in some moss curled parsley. Parsley can be annoying because it takes a long time to germinate. Another good one to start right now, if you haven't, is actually cilantro. Because mm. cilantro, as we've talked about before, does tend to bolt in the summer. Yeah. And the cooler months are actually the perfect time to grow cilantro. So I think that's a genius call. I also think I might be making a stupid call right now. <laughs> and this would be my holy grail. You guys know I'm potato daddy. I've grown potatoes in just about every way, shape and form that is humanly possible. But I have yet to successfully grow the Clancy potato from seed. Now that we own a seed company here at Epic Gardening, the reason why you see seed packs with a little, what's called a sachet, is because of two reasons. Number one, the seed needs to be individually counted like these Clancy's because this, believe it or not, it's actually a very expensive seed. Not for you to buy, but for us to buy 
to give to you guys because potato breeders, I mean, think about how many people out there are breeding <laughs> yeah. potato seeds. It's almost none. It's like and one so the, the supply is quite low. So we want to make sure we're giving you guys the value that you paid for. So we literally count out every single one. So we make sure the exact amount you order is in the packets. It's counted with a laser. It's pretty crazy. So, so I'm going in with about 12. This is the whole pack there. Woo. And we'll see if I can pull it off. I mean, fingers crossed if Potato Daddy can pull this one off. What <laughs> He's else? done it before. We'll see. What else can't he do? You know? <laughs> So I'm going so in with that. What I'm starting uh, actually two flowers right now. The okay. first one is this Envy Zinnia. I actually have one of them growing right now. It's the green one. Yeah. It has a chartreuse color and it looks really cool. I just love that the entire plant's green. It doesn't like stand out as much, yeah. but it looks amazing. The other one I'm going with is the Snapdragon. And nice. it's the night and day. I really like um, sort of maroon, kind of darker red colors. Yeah. And this one looks like it's right up my alley. Did you know you can eat it? I did not. Yeah, you can. Taste you good? Can, uh, <laughs> There's a lot the of things you could eat, right? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing with the edible flowers is like, sure, you can, but you're definitely not doing it for the flavor. You're more doing it to pretty up the plate. Yeah. But but dude, there's so much to, to eating a dish that's the aesthetic of it, that's, that's the scent, that's yeah. the appeal, and then your brain sort of goes, that tastes better, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna be going in with King Richard Leeks. I've had a penchant for leeks pretty much since I made my very first potato leek soup from a fully homegrown status. And so I absolutely love leeks, maybe even more than onions. I find I can keep them in the ground a little bit longer, Yeah. kind of use them as nature's grocery store and just pull them out when I need it. And so again, kind of guess the theme of my tray here, Jacques, is multi-sowing. Gonna go in with about 20 something total seeds in an epic six cell tray and I should be good. You just separate those out and plant them. This past season, I actually separated just like this, <laughs> yeah. about 50 leaks out and every single one that's awesome. slapped. Yeah, and the other thing is that's a pretty fast leak. I think it's like 70 or 80 days. Yeah, 75. So you might even be able to get a little cheeky harvest uh, before springtime. And this this probably works for, I would say, almost any zone besides like the absolute lowest because yeah. this is They're a summer hardy. sower. Yeah. Yeah, 75 days from August will put most zones at at frost. And you can also throw this under cover. It does pretty Absolutely. well in the frost. Yeah, I'm actually starting a flat of arugula. Ooh. I would prefer to direct seed it, but every time I do, the roly polies rear their head and they chomp it down. Yeah. So I'm going in with a full six pack Astro arugula. Delicious, especially now that I'm addicted to making pizza. Yeah. I want a little fresh arugula on top of that Dude, pizza. Dude, that's a fire combo. Oh, so, yeah. so both Jock and I have gotten these Gosney domes which we've used with reckless abandon. <laughs> yeah. And we've become pizza masters. I mean, sourdough pizza, making the dough. The only thing I haven't made on the pizza is the cheese at this point. <laughs> yeah. You know, every, sing every other piece is completely homegrown. Speaking of homegrown, I'm going in with something that used to be a holy grail for me, Jacques. This year, I will say a little salty, a little stringy, but this is <laughs> Utah celery. The seeds are actually smaller than I'm used to for, oh, for wow. most celery varieties. Take a look at that. They're pretty small. I'm gonna do maybe three or four per cell. Yeah. Just to make sure I get a germination. But with celery, if you're in a warm zone, guys, like this is the time because it takes about 21 days to germinate. So you have some time if it's early August, mid August, even September, and it wants the mild temperatures. It doesn't want this ramp up to 85, 95 Fahrenheit. It's going to say, hey, I don't like that. I'm going to get stringy. I'm going to get sort of hollowed out in the middle. I'm going to get salty. Remember that? We tasted oh, yeah. that one. It was super salty, super gross. Take you out. I will say, though, if you haven't grown celery at home, it is not a waste of time. Because here's the deal, you go buy celery, right? You almost never use the whole entire bunch. Yeah. When you have it in your garden, you go outside, snap off three stalks for a meal. Mm -hmm. It just keeps growing nonstop. You could keep picking it out and it's totally fine. Yeah. So definitely worth it if you haven't. And right now I'm starting two different cabbages. I already okay. went with the Copenhagen, yeah. but now I'm putting in the red acre for a little pop of color. And this one's actually new to me. This is one that I've always been wanting to try. It's the Fiddler Kraut. The one that Ooh. creates that weird cone. Oh, shoot. Is it kind of like a Calibos <laughs> style cabbage? I think so. Yeah. Like where the leaves kind of wrap around and it makes like a pyramid. Okay. Nice. So this is kind of for fun. Apparently it's good for sauerkraut too, but I just want to see those weird cones in my garden. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with the broccoli I have yet to grow. Waltham 29 is one I've grown often. Yeah. But De, Ch De Chico, De Chico. De Chico. Is that? I think, so. I don't know. Italians don't roast know. us in the comments only because I definitely so. messed this up. <laughs> But this is a, a variety from 1890, small to medium sized, great, harvest it young, and then you'll get the side shoots. It is a fantastic one. So broccoli to me, 
actually used to not care about it at all. I would say all the brassicas as a kid, I hate it. Oh, don't 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 serve me broccoli. Don't serve me broccoli on the plate. I'll sit there, I'll throw a tantrum, I won't eat it. Man, it wasn't a tantrum, but I would stalemate my mother. Yeah. Like basically, she'd say, you can't leave the table until you eat this broccoli. i say, then I'll die here. <laughs> I literally remember saying, I'll die here. And she's like, all right, dude, like, chill. you know, relax. My <laughs> poor mother. Like, why did I do that to her? You know, why did I do that? I think you already started one of these, but I'm also going to do a snowball Y cauliflower. Yeah. Great dependable cauliflower. But I'm also going to be starting a orange variety. This one's called Clementine. Um, I just like the orange ones. I feel like they just taste a little bit different yeah. in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I definitely want to start a couple of those. Like a well. cheddar style. Yeah, like exactly. Just different one. Exactly. So I'm going to go with the Napa cabbage. I actually haven't had a ton of I give up. Napa in my garden. And so I'm going to give it a shot because hopefully to get a little bit of kimchi going. Yeah. We'll I, see if I can pull it off. I'm just never going to try it again. Really? I've tried it so many times. Do you have a trauma response to I have I a, say the word a Napa? Deep trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. Every time I grow it, it's perfect for trapping every single earwig in my garden. Really? Every single one. I grow it in containers. I grew it in the green stock, underground. I've tried everything. I've netted it. By the time I'm ready to harvest, it's full of earwigs. And well, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try a bit of a protective screen because we have the critter covers now it. on the store. Yeah. So I'm going to try the critter cover and then I'm going to try a little wrap around that cover. Nothing's touching my baddies because this is one kilo, slow bolt, one kilogram. I mean, come on, 2.2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 pounds. You're going to get hit by the subterranean attack. We might get hit, but we're going to give it a shot nonetheless. So I'm debating, Jacques, do I even put in kale right now? I mean, but I'm putting I, in one. But do I put in Brussels sprouts? I mean, I just did, so I'm why don't you tell to. us about it? <laughs> well, I'm going to put in Long Island Improved, but I do okay. want to read you this packet because this... Hit me with it. You ready for this? Because honestly, this feels like my life story. <laughs> Modern chefs have transformed this historically disliked vegetable. Check. Hated it as a kid. Why? Because 90s mothers, nothing against my own mother, all 90s mothers combined only knew how to steam this... They only knew how to steam Brussels Which sprouts. The worst way to and eat then it. you run out of the steam at the bottom. All of a sudden, you're heating it over air. And all of a sudden, it, it burns. It tastes like <sighs> a dead carcass of some so kind. Bad. I'm not interested. But listen. He's out. This much sought after food that is delicious, deep fried, steamed, well, that's wrong, yeah. or roasted. Give them plenty of water, nutrients, and time to grow before forming sprouts. That's the thing with Brussels, I've noticed, because. It's basically just a cabbage that makes tiny little baby boy cabbages yeah. on the stem because it's really the same species. Basically, the secret is convection. Hit it hot, cook it fast. It's going to crisp up and be delicious every single time. Oh, my gosh. Cooking with Jacques. Tell me, tell me more. Dropping a convection <laughs> reference on us here. Cooking and with Jacques. You ready for a really, really weird one? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. This is one I, I found online randomly. I don't know if I'm going to like it's this. It's a northern adapted pigeon pea. Oh, really? So pigeon pea or gondoles, they're like delicious little beans, but they're a tropical plant. They do well in like Florida. So I figured a northern adapted one might do well in San Diego because we're just not that tropical here. I am actually going in with another kale, Nero Toscana, or like a dinosaur. Okay. Uh, because I like kale. Ooh. And then I'm getting ready for soup season. Right now, I feel like I'm a soup. I'm sweating, dude. <laughs> Did you see Maybe it? Maybe it's stew. It's running yeah. down, it's running down the brow. Maybe it's right stew now. season right here on this table, but I'm getting ready to actually cook some stews. It's not a stew. Sorry. I want a sip of it. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah. that much right now. I do not want a sip of this stew. <laughs> so you're going with 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 a kale. Yeah. I'm going with something I think you don't like, which is eh. endive or endive olesh trefine. Trefine. I'm not sure. <laughs> also called frisi. I don't know how to say that one either. Endive's beautiful lacy leaves will turn ordinary lettuce salad into an upscale bistro mesclun. Nice and tart. Or I'll bitter. be serving you a bistro mesclun sometime <laughs> soon. But oh you know what? In the fields. In the fields, I actually saw cool looking seed, by the way. Oh, yeah. I actually saw a um, endive that what they did is they put a blanching cover over mm. it. So they put something completely opaque over yeah. it in the field. Like forced it. After it started to, to leaf out. And so you got a milder endive. I think a lot of the things that people don't like about endive is just that bitter flavor. They're just like, nah, I'd rather just eat lettuce, right? <laughs> so what this does is it gives you that mild endive flavor without okay. that bitterness, and it actually lightens up the the leaves themselves. The color, right? right? It's, it's the same as if you were to blanch an asparagus or a leek. Right. If you That's hide a plant surface from the sun, it can't photosynthesize, it doesn't produce chlorophyll, it doesn't turn green. And so that's kind of what I saw in the fields. Maybe I'll try that this season with the Olesh Trefine. Yeah, what I'll say about that too is that I hate it in salad, but where it actually works really well yeah. is like as a dipper. 
like on like a cheese board. Oh, I could see that. Or like with like a you take a little like a sprig and just or onion dip. That like bitterness, it works. Chucking with Jacques. Last see? one, Javanese. Javanese. <laughs> <laughs> Genovese basil. Okay, so he's going in with the most basic basil to close it out. Well done, Jacques, well done. Let's take this over to the greenhouse, Jacques. We have a little special surprise. Jacques and Paul and our team designed probably the best thing we've ever built at Epic Gardening, (laughs) at least quality-wise, which is our new potting bench in the greenhouse. Take a look, guys. Jacques, maybe your finest work yet. The cedar potting bench, epic potting bench. It's just two by fours and four by fours. This thing is a tank. We built it purpose fit. (laughs) exactly to this greenhouse here, but the favorite part. Yeah, that's amazing. Water in the greenhouse. So when you're starting a seed, what I like to do at least, you tell me if this is the same for you, Jacques, you usually would have a somewhat hydrated mix. Yeah. Usually. This is a little bit light on that, so I think what I like to do is I come over it with a shower and I just lightly wet. Interesting. I don't do something too crazy. Is that what you do or no? I What I prefer to do is mist. Just because you, you, you sometimes the, the shower... Disturbs. Like if, if you have small seeds, it's annoying. Most None of these are probably that small, they would matter. What I would say is if I was surface sowing, like yeah. a flower or something, I would not do this. If it was a very sensitive exactly. seed. If I was starting flowers, actually, I would never do that. But this is totally fine. What I'll do is, in a perfect world, I kind of like to just like let it rip and kind of go over like this. Yeah. Which is nice because the greenhouse floor is permeable. Exactly. But I'll also do a little bit of this in our universal bottom trays. Bottom water. So I just want to make sure that it's fully hydrated and this should let it last for quite some time. Yeah, that's the tricky thing about fall seed starting is that it is still really hot. The seeds have been sown, but once they come up, you can run into a lot of problems with stunted seedlings. I don't know about you, Jacques, but in my early couple first years of gardening, this really impacted me. I got, I got depressed about it. I'd be <laughs> yeah. so sad. So check this video out here. It's our best tips to prevent stunted seedlings. Shop botanical interest for seeds. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.